Sketch party time, everybody. If you're here to party, put your hands up. You gotta do it. You gotta do it at the start or else you can't come in. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you all doing? What's up, Chad, Eric, Steve, Sam, Mi Amigos? Good to see you. If you don't know me, I think you do though. I'm Kathleen, I'm your host for Sketch Party. It's a super fun little stream that we're gonna be doing for the next hour. And it is what it sounds like it's a party where we sketch. Could it get any better? I do not think so. Oh, thanks, Steve. Thanks, my toque. Uh, so we are going to be finishing up our project from yesterday where we were working on a charcoal illustration. Let me pop over to that super quick. Yeah, so we did these awesome charcoal portraits of ourselves. I saw Chad posted one of himself in uh, Discord. So that was awesome. So we did this kind of um, more detailed facial features and then less detailed everything else, like the hair and the shoulders. Now this isn't an exact, mm, this isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to go even more simple with the hair and the shoulders. So we'll finish this version, then we'll do the simple version. And then for the rest of the time that we have left, we're gonna do some contour drawings, some line drawings, I'll show you. What I mean, Lee, thank you. Appreciate ya. Celine, it's party time. You know it. You know it. Jay, what's up? So before we get started, oh, Erica, hello. <laughs> before we get started, let me know how you're doing, how you're hanging in there. Have you done anything creative today? Or have you done anything just for you today? Let me know in the chat. You gotta tell me. I gotta know. Okay. So we are in fresco. I'm gonna pull my iPad in front of me. And as you remember from yesterday, if you were here, we are working from reference. So I had this little itty bitty picture of myself that I took before the stream yesterday with my beautiful green screen <laughs> behind me. Uh, and we just used it as reference for our drawing. So no tracing. This is just uh, looking at how the face curves, the lines of the shoulders, and trying to gather and glean some likeness from that. So for example, we talked about like how far apart my eyes are, what size they are, what shape they are, to make it look like me as opposed to someone else, like Maggie Gyllenhaal or something. Erica says, I ate a very spicy radish and that gave me spicy power. Erica, be careful with those though. You don't want to get too overpowered. I'm proud of you. Did you grow it? If you guys don't know, Erica is a very talented, hmm, I almost said like garden, like creature. How would you describe yourself with your very powerful garden that you have? You're the chancellor of your garden. Uh, Eric says, I design all day and make YouTube videos all night. Eric, I didn't know you made YouTube videos. That's cool. What kind? I assume they're design related. Steve says, creatively eating a pile of mandarins. Oh my gosh, a pile. That sounds powerful as well. You guys and your power food. It's like Animal Crossing up in here. You could go dig up a whole tree. Okay, so we were talking about likenesses and how to make something look like the thing that you want it to look like. And you really just have to look at the object and measure distances, decide sizes, uh, and keep pushing and pulling your proportions until you're like, yep, that looks like me. Garden critter, there you go, I like that. So uh, let's go in and add some color to the hair and the shoulders. All I've done to add this little bit of purple that you see over here in the corner, I just wanna change the lines I already have into other colors. All I did was lock the transparency of the layer. So what that means is you select the layer that you want to recolor. So I have it selected over here in the top right. Then go to the triple dot or the ellipse icon on the right and click tap lock transparency. 
And that's basically just gonna make like a template out of that layer so I can scribble with this purple in the hair, but if I scribble outside of it, it's only gonna be within that layer. And we already have such awesome texture from these charcoal brushes that we don't really have to add any extra texture. It's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna quickly go through here and just have fun with some color. Add it in. We could use some mixer brushes. Let's do that after we add in our color. So I like this purple and orange vibe. Add a little bit of this. Because I really want the focus to be on the face, so we're gonna keep those the highest contrast with the black and white and then add a bunch of color everywhere else. So there's still gonna be focus everywhere else, like color definitely draws the eye. It's gonna be a different kind of focus. You know I love a good strawberry lemonade combo. All right, let's add some sort of like dark grayish blue. And what color should we make the hair? Maybe get some burgundy going in there. And since it's on its own layer, I could scribble all over the face and nothing happens. We can go back to the orange, orangey. What you drawing on? I have an iPad Pro and this is Fresco, just an app, a little old app that you can download. Oh, Camilla says, distracting myself while choosing my master design essay subject. What are your options? What are you feeling? Maybe we can talk through it a little bit. Oh, it's hard for me to make those kind of big decisions because it's like you could do anything. Oh, you have a family channel, Eric. The most recent video is blindfolded haircut. You are a brave, brave soul. Much respect. I'm deciding I don't really like that red color. Okay, let's get some blue going in here. I could use the lasso tool. Let's try it and just see what happens and like make an organic selection here. Maybe we will drop in like a brighter blue. And let the edges dictate that a little bit. Deselect it, make a new selection. You can make it kind of move with the movement of the hair if you like. I love this part of making art. It's really just intuitive and fun. Remember, we're gonna use some mixer brushes at the end to mix some colors together. So don't you worry about it looking too blocky. Let's bring the pink back in. Oops, wrong color. There we go. And it looks like I have some details on a different layer that I'm going to need to grab. And those are on perhaps this layer. Yes. Let's lock that transparency real quick. Color that in. I duplicated this layer a couple times so that the facial features would get a little bit darker. All right, so now let's mix. You love design, but it can't beat family time. I agree. Noelle, hello, longtime viewer saying hello once more. We've missed you. I totally remember you. How you doing? The brush strokes in your hair are so lovely. Thank you. It feels almost like the, the movement I got feels almost like um, brush, like ink and brush. Not so much like charcoal, but that's why I love this. They, they start to resemble each other. You're going to have to watch yesterday's because you got your likeness spot on. Thanks. And it, honestly, yesterday we weren't even really focusing on likeness. I'm kind of impressed with how uh, well I nailed it on the first day. There's obviously stuff I could do to work on it a little bit more, but it'll do for now. Whoa, wonder why this is still black right here. 
must have forgotten it. Okay, let's mix our colors a little bit and use the mixer brushes. So the mixer brushes are kind of new in Fresco. Tap that, and I actually have a favorite one, but there are a couple different mixers in here. I love the Sandy mix Mixter <laughs> Mixer. I'll select that. You can see it's already in my favorites. So it's going to take the color that I start with, input some of the color that I have selected, so that pink, and mix the colors together a bit. So maybe I want to integrate more of this light blue where the blue and the dark blue meet and the purple. This is great for like actually rendering skin tone or uh, solid objects, but I'm just doing it to have some fun. Just kind of want to see what it can do, you know? Get some of this purple in here. <laughs> the best kind of learning is on the is in the line of trial by fire. Just do it. This is a no judgment zone. Even if you don't like what you make, that doesn't mean you can't try again. We bring some of the purple down here. And the reason I like the sandy mix mixer is it's almost like a gouache brush. Like there's still a little bit of texture going on in here. You're kind of pushing and pulling the pixels around. And we'll just see what we end up with. That is some cool hair. I wonder how much it would cost to get that done at the salon. Too much. Okay, let's go back to this orange. Maybe mix these together a little bit, bring some orange over here into the yellow. And the pink. Ooh, look at that texture right there. It's oh, so nice, right? Soy nice. Grab some of this pink. Maybe replace that kind of weird gray blue that I chose. Not feeling it anymore. Turn this off. What if I turn off my face layers? And it's just my hair and my shoulders. That kind of looks like me. Just that way. It's pretty cool. And if I turn these all back on, I can even duplicate my colorful hair layer come in here with a big old brush. Let's go back to the charcoal. And just introduce the black again. And now I have two versions. I have the colorful version and the kind of colorful version. That's pretty cool. I dig it. This is looking wicked groovy. I agree. Okay, so we finished my version. Now, remember the reference that we had yesterday by Tina Burning? So a lot of the focus was on the face and then the detail was lessened for the hair and the shoulders. It wasn't even complete. Like we don't even see the, the uh, contour of her neck. So let's turn off my layers that show those details and let's just do a super similar, I mean a simple version. Turn it off the hair. I am unlocking all of these transparencies. I duplicated these layers. I could merge them, but I don't think I really need to right now. And I'm just going to select these and erase it on every layer. There we go. All right, let's bring my reference back up and we are just gonna do a simple single line silhouette. I made a new layer and let's jump back to our charcoal. Maybe we'll choose something a little thinner. That's kind of nice for the silhouette. Thank you, Steve. Noelle, for us uh, Pacific Time viewers, it's very brave of you to be streaming during the two to 3 p.m. crash time. It is brave, right? That's why this is a party. We're supposed to get our adrenaline pumping again. You'll notice that 
these streams aren't, aren't super popping. There aren't a ton of people in here because everyone's taking a little siesta. That's okay. I don't mind. I understand. All right, so I'm going to group all of my face layers and I uh, duplicate them so that I can do a version that's a little bit smaller without messing up Oops, the proportions. I'll undo that. Duplicate this as well. Merge these all together. Okay. Do a version that's a little bit smaller so I can make sure I really get those lines and it has a nice airy vibe to it. Okay. Andrew, what's up? Are you ready for your uh, daily creative challenge at 7 p.m.? You're wild. Staying up so late for the Aussies. <laughs> no, well, next time we need to bring glow sticks. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of music is playing. I hope it's glow stick music. Yeah, Kathleen, this is a vibe. Yes. I'm glad. So glad. It's uh, 10 a.m. in New Zealand. Nice. Your day is just getting started. Okay, I've put it off long enough. One thing you could do for this style is to increase the smoothing on your brush a little bit, just to make sure you get that nice flowy vibe. And I'm gonna press harder and lighter and maybe undo it. And just designate some of the lines of the hair, not all of it. Just kind of the form the form factors might not even put the entire neck, maybe just the cut of the shirt. Ooh, I kind of like that just like that. I might move this over a little bit. Scrunch it in a bit. Perfect. And see what else we can do. One thing Tina did in the reference was do these really cool like paint daubs uh, where the shirt was. So maybe we'll try that as well. Maybe we'll do that in the hair instead of the shirt. One last thing I want to try is to integrate this texture from the hair into the face just a little bit because the face looks like it was drawn with a charcoal pencil right and the hair was more like vine charcoal like a bigger piece so let's do some confident lines here i really like how i drew this nose usually it takes me a while to to get the nose that i like but i think it turned out pretty well Let's do some crazy paint. New layer underneath the lines. I'm gonna use actually, I think like an oil, oil paint for this. Let's choose a bright color. Maybe something like this. And make it really large so we can really see that paint texture. And just drop it in. I'm using the pressure on my pencil to make it larger or smaller. And yeah, maybe an orange, maybe kind of like a brown. I don't really use brown very much in my work. My shirt is actually brown in the picture, so I guess that makes sense. And maybe mix that brown with a little bit of purple. Make it a little bit bigger with less flow. And go back to 
our kind of sea foamy color. There we go. Something a lot more simple, maybe more Matisse-esque with a detailed face. My ears are bad and I can't really hear the music. Oh no, I think it is pretty quiet. Some tinkling notes for you to listen to. All right, so here's a very simple version. We'll turn that off. Maybe we'll turn this back on. Whoa, <laughs> looks like an 80s mohawk because I'm using the wrong face. Turn that one off. Turn this back on. Whoops, and we'll do that. I think that's awesome. Okay, so now let's do just the contour art with the rest of the time that we have. So I'm here till 3.30ish. Uh, so we have quite a bit of time actually to nail down some drawings. And if you wanna follow along with me, highly recommend, snap a picture of yourself real quick. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to show it to anybody. You're just using it as reference for yourself. What's up, Jason? Nice to see ya. I want to compare all the different versions I do at the end of this. So I'm going to use the same reference, but we're just going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to group everything together. Just so I don't get confused. Get confused easily. <laughs> There's one version as well. IBN, what's up? Good to see you. How are ya? I'm gonna turn that off and let's start fresh. So we have our reference. I might increase the size just a little bit. And one thing I think I've said before in different sketch parties is if you change your fresco mode to light mode, I think we can do it in here. Yes. Then you can move your reference totally off the canvas. It just changes it to multiply and uh, there you don't have any obstructions in your canvas. So let's keep it this way for now. <laughs> Wait, I didn't have to show anybody? Now you tell me. Chad, yours is awesome though. I don't have Discord open on this computer or iPad, but if you wanna share it somehow or point people to it somehow, it was pretty cool. I really liked seeing your style. It was like, that looked like you, but it was very cartoony and kind of like faceted, like the planes of your face were very um, formed. It was really cool. I liked it. Okay, so for this singular drawing, let's do something that's more like ink. And I'll also show you an example of what I'm even talking about. Maybe we'll do like a, fa a fashion pen, fountain pen. So my inspiration for this is a little artist named Tuna Bora. Do you guys know Tuna? Tuna is awesome and uh, has been doing a lot of these kind of just contour meditative drawings recently. Um, I thought this would be the better thing to do on the second day because being able to do this successfully with a lot of uh, realism or making it look like a real person takes practice. Like you have to draw the human figure a lot. Uh, so I thought we already had a little bit of practice drawing this exact reference image yesterday and today. So it might be a little easier to achieve this today. I think there are parakeets outside. It's pretty cool. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. If you want to follow Tuna, it's Tuna Muna Luna on Instagram. So here we go. Just drawing one line, pausing to make decisions, not erasing anything, and just being really deliberate with how things are being laid out. So we'll see how successfully we can do this. Uh, maybe we'll do a couple challenges. Maybe we'll do like a five minute, a 10 minute, and a 20 minute. I think we have enough time to do that. Maybe not quite. And if the face isn't the way that you like it, that's okay, we can do another one, but we gotta stick with it for the time being. Making small corrections as you go along. This actually looks like a pencil. Well, it is a pencil, obviously. <laughs> Maybe I'll use a pencil instead. Really nice, right? So there's lots of different ins inspiration in here if you wanna check it out. So let's get back to ours. I'm gonna go back to 
a pencil. Dry media, scratchy pencil. Yeah, I like that. And let's go for like a dark maroon. And you can play with your smoothing if you want a little bit of help. Since this is gonna be a lot of stopping and starting, you might enjoy that. I'm gonna turn mine down probably like halfway. IBN says, hey, Andrew, I'm literally waiting for your next live about logo design. Yes, 7 p.m., don't be late. Andrew, how is your DCC going so far? Today's the first challenge day, right? Very much exciting. All right, so for this, it would probably, probably be best to draw it in the aspect ratio that you're going to actually draw it in. So it'd be cool if I could have my iPad vertical or portrait. Uh, but since we are live streaming, that is difficult. But if you're doing it on your own, just make your life a little bit easier and use the correct ratio or aspect. Yeah, Eric, it's at 7 p.m. Adobe Live After Dark. So I think I'm gonna start, I'm kind of scared because once you draw one thing, it designates the scale of everything else. So I'm gonna go for the profile of the face on the, over here first, and we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Okay, here we go. So we've got the curve of the forehead. Comes down a little bit. It's okay to take a break, take a breather. And then we've got the lid of the eye and my eyeball itself comes down just a little bit vertically. And then we've got the cheekbone. Okay, with me so far? Are you holding your breath? Are you nervous? All right, this is where I had a hard time yesterday. I made the chin too angled when it should be coming kind of straight down at the bottom. So let's do that. Whoops, a little wobbly, that's okay. Oh no. So here's a good example of where you can correct it. All right, we got the profile of the face, woo! How many hours a week do you guys live stream? Adobe Live Total? It's like over 40 hours, it's wild. I don't live stream very much right now, so two hours a week, because I'm only doing these two sketch parties one hour each day. Uh, Andrew, you're streaming a lot, right? 30 minutes each day for the daily creative challenge and then probably doing some on your own as well. I'll be doing a daily creative challenge, not next week, but the week after. That'll be fun, that'll be in the morning. Nice way to start, start your day. All right, we've got this line below the chin. I'm gonna lightly kind of decide the line of the bottom lip. 40 hours is not enough, or two hours is not enough. Two hours is not enough, I agree. And this is where you can kind of get a little bit angular with it on the lip. Maybe have it look a little bit more cartoony. Have I picked up any new hobbies at home? Hmm, working at home. <laughs> Not really, actually, this isn't a new hobby, but it's a, re a relearned hobby. I've been reading a lot because I just have to look at screens like all day, every day, and I still want something to stimulate my brain, but without looking at a brightly lit screen. So a book is the perfect answer. Reading books, I'm currently reading a series. It's called The First Law, I think. It's a trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, but funny and shorter. Recommend it if you like that kind of like, his, not historical, but like fantasy warfare, intrigue kind of thing. All right, we'll draw this little line. What is this called? The f I think it has like a PH, PH name. Dr. Google, tell me. All right, now I'm gonna jump up to the eyeball. 
Now I'm kind of just feeling willy-nilly. I'm going to slowly shape in this eyebrow. The line of the eyelid. Ooh, that's cool. Congrats, Gus Martin, for all the Adobe Live. I agree. Congrats, Gus Martin. Do you want to come do a cameo? You're welcome to. Going analog, I like it. I wish I had more to say about actual hobbies. I have not actually had much free time. All right, so I did not make the forehead big enough. Surprise, surprise. Never want to actually draw my bit my forehead as big as it really is. <laughs> Chad wants Gus to come in for a cameo. He might be in a meeting. Who knows? We got this little bit of hair coming over here. Kind of outlines the face a bit. Oh, I hear someone coming. Da 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 da. It's the boys. It's God. <laughs> this is Adobe Live. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're both rocking the beanies today. <laughs> and you're welcome for the dog content. Thanks, Deb. Good, good boy content. For the good, good boy content. You're great. Thanks. It's funny because this big camera view is labeled big boy in uh, Wirecast. So the good boys, the big boys. It's a good time. <laughs> How many of you are going back to the office at 50% capacity? Can't say. It is not decided yet. How about all? Everybody working remotely? Spending your time on other things? Cutest family. Thanks, Erica. I'm using all these distractions as a way to not get too scared of this drawing I'm doing. Does anyone else get stressed when you make art sometimes? Ooh, I made my face too short. It happens. Oopsies. Again, no erasing, no transforming. Just laying down lines and letting them be what they are. Really is a kind of fun form of meditation. Alrighty, so judging by where I put the first eye, I made the nose too wide and too short. That's funny. I guess the other eye would be like, oh, I'm scared. It's not going to look right. Maybe if I draw the pupil, that'll help me decide where the other eye is going. Uh, that's all right. No looking back now. <laughs> You're remote as well. Well, nobody back in the office yet. You're okay with it? Good, Noel. I'm glad it's working. Working for you. Can we draw the dog while he sit long enough? He'll probably lay down long enough. I'd love to get a dog cam someday because he loves to lay right under this desk where he's not supposed to be. But it would make it very easy to do a dog cam. Now, since we have this eye kind of figured out and it's not right, it is not placed correctly, we can correct a little bit with the lines that we draw now. So I could cut the eye to be a little bit smaller. We can use the eyebrow to distract from the whole situation. Does anybody else sketch like this? Just kind of letting your pen or your pencil go where you think it should go and then fixing along the way or not. So yesterday my 
two slash three year old nephew was watching the stream while I was streaming. And afterwards he asked his mom, can she come over to my house? <laughs> She's cool, can she come over to my house? This picture looks very smug. I just thought that was the cutest. It made my day. I hope it made his day. <laughs> this really looks like I'm a little bit sleepy in this drawing. Eric says, I love working from home. Saves me the commute time. Same. Same, same, same. All right, so since we've already, we, I, I'm not super happy with how the face has turned out. I can just be a little bit more freeform with the hair because the stakes are low. It's funny that you guys can see the entire drawing as it's happening because most of this time my hand is covering the drawing because I'm left-handed and that's just how it be sometimes. So I keep looking up at the monitor and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Kathleen and Gus, two superstars from one household, the house Martin. Did say the most unexpected things. Made me very happy. Steaks? Chad, are you having steaks? Two wines into the fun luck. Oh my gosh, Steve. I hope not. <laughs> All right. So let's finish this version and then we can do another one. We will have a compare and contrast at the end. Neckline, shirt, a little bit of wrinkle over here. There's a really cool like floral, um, like cutout pattern in that shirt. That would be cool to capture somehow, like in a very simplified way. But for now, we will make this a little bit smaller. We will drag it off the screen, drag it off the screen, and we'll do it again. Actually, let's keep it on. No cropping allowed. All right, let's pick a new color. What color do you think I should do for the line? It's not a big deal, but I thought I would ask. <laughs> Is that green screen photo your new profile pic? It should be. Thanks, Noelle. It's not, but it is a nice little shot I took, huh? Maybe we'll do green in honor of the green screen. I don't think I've ever drawn with a green line before in all my many days of drawing. Maybe like a dark olive blue, says Steve. Dark blue or light blue? Gotta tell me. Chris says, working at a printer, we're essential since we offer mailing services. Chris, how's that going? You doing okay? Magenta, says Celine. Maybe we can do blue and, and slagenta. I can't speak. Good thing I'm an artist and a live streamer. <laughs> dark navy, okay, we will. A mix magenta and blue. Let's actually try this. So we got like a dark blue. We're gonna go a little less saturated too. Increase the size. Do this. Go to our magenta. Do a little bit of this. Do a little bit of Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. This. And there we go. Now we have, well, that didn't turn out how I thought it was going to. <laughs> a magenta and blue line. Let's make it a little bit further. More blue than pink. Okay, we can work with that. We can work with that. It's like a baby blue, but with a bit more mature of a blue. It's a grown-up blue, as they say, a toddler blue. It's okay, it took a bit for everyone to get on the mask train, but they're on the mask train now, and that's where they should stay. All right, let's try this again. So maybe I'll start with a different part of the face this time. Ooh, maybe I'll start with the actual facial features and build the face out from there. That might give me a little bit more control. I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time though, so maybe I won't have any more control. 
And for this one, I'm going to do a total contour drawing. And I already started too big, we'll undo it. I'm gonna do a contour drawing, so I'm not gonna pick up my pencil at all. I'm going rogue, folks. So we've got the eye on the left. I'm not picking up my pencil. Have you ever drawn like this? It's really fun because it's kind of low stakes. Like you're pretty sure it's not going to look good, but when it does look good, oh, I lifted it up, but I just had to move my hand. I'll start in the same spot. When it does look good, it's pretty great. I made my face way too narrow and this way too tall. This is hard being left-handed and having my reference on the left. I should switch that next time. Ooh, mistakes were made. <laughs> this is scary. Okay, that eye needs to be a lot bigger. This is just part of the exercise, you guys. We'll go under here. Try and fix the eye size. I did this with a Meg Lewis from Darn Good at 99U, like last year, the year before. It was very fun. Our drawings were very bad. And as it so happens, so is this drawing. All right, well quickly, look at that chin. I look like Jay Leno. Quickly add this and move on, move on from this. Okay, turn that off. <laughs> Lock the joint down. <laughs> it is a mod fest, way to cuff. Don't look at the drawing I just made, it was really bad. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's move my reference over a little bit. Where are you hiding reference? It's a group within a group within a group. Hmm. Is it this one? Yep. I knew it. What's the best way to go from lightning cord to HDMI? The Apple brand is best. It's a very technical question for Gus Martin, our local tech expert. All right, let's try drawing with a little bit of a different style. Let's go for charcoal, but we're going to use the side of the charcoal. So for example, I'm using my pen like this building it up. Let's use the side of it and build up our drawing. I got to find one that feels real good. That one's not bad. Ooh, let's do this. We'll get a really soft vibe going on. Pause, screenshot, print, and frame. Please don't. Who is it that works with the printer? Chris. Maybe Chris can frame it and print it for you. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Good. No, you did not. All right, so we're on a new layer. I'm using the side of my pencil and I'm just going to slowly build up my shapes. So we got the hair at the top. Maybe make my size a little bit bigger. This is gonna be a slow process. We'll do something really rough at first. that height. And the chin is pretty much a little bit higher than the bottom of the hair. Okay. Looks like a potato so far. Looking good. 
Maybe I'll decrease my size a little bit, increase my flow. And mark out some eye shapes. This is going to be a really soft drawing. It's going to kind of form itself out of the fog. And with this, you can kind of build up your your structure as you go. So for example, I didn't make the cheekbone come out far, far enough, so I can push that out a little bit further. There we go. Erica says, I've never used charcoal outside of a drawing because I could not handle the scratchy feeling. Happy I never had to experience that again now that we have these brushes. Ayy. Did you ever use like the saw? Oh wait, actually, I just had that feeling of when, especially using the charcoal pencils. Ooh. That is not a good feeling, but using like soft vine charcoal, it's like chalk. It's nice, like pastel. I still can't stand charcoal pencils using them. It hurts me. I like how it looks, but it hurts me on the inside. This is a good time to use your skills um of measuring and distance so say you're actually like looking at something and this is when an artist would do something like this where they measure how tall something is from where they're sitting like the distance between the nose and they're the tip of the nose and the eye and they'll like change the angle and then you lay that back down on your work and you can use that to help you when you're working on building a form up like this that's a really helpful workflow if you're looking at something real why isn't my pencil working? There we go. It forgot what its job was. All right, now let's build in some of that form. Just putting shadows where I see shadows and highlights where I, or not doing anything where I see a highlight, just letting it be. Looks like my head's kind of tilted a different direction with the way that I've drawn it. Got a little bit of a shadow under the nose, the nostril. Gotta say, yesterday felt like a pretty good drawing day. Today, maybe not so much. But by the end of this stream, I will be warmed up and hopefully able to make some good, good art. Add some of the darkness for the hair. We still got a little bit of the pink in the pencil. Forgot about that. That one's for Steve. The pink and the dark navy blue. Let's decrease the size of this a little bit. Might even change the angle. Boom. Let's fill in some of this hair. This feels almost like an old vintage painting of a photograph. And I'm seriously using the side of my brush. I'm like painting like this. Just a friendly reminder for the 118 folk in here, do not, I repeat, do not try to sharpen your Apple Pencil in an electric pencil sharpener. Oof. Ouchie. Ouchie. Erica loves waxy, creamy oil pastel. Yes. On a non-textured paper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is like a real grown-up blue. This is an elderly blue right here. One thing I love about doing uh, this where you're laying down darkness is you can come back in and erase from it. So let's do something like that. Maybe I will lay down some darkness where the eye is here and here as well. Maybe we'll lay down a little bit of darkness where the nose is, the lip, chin. And then I can come in, I could either change my blend mode to clear, like that, 
decrease my size. I can come in here and carve out my highlights. The eye looks so much better already. Maybe the nose comes up here. There we go. And you can make the edges as sharp or as harsh as you want or do not want. Then we will change our blend mode back to normal and keep laying in our shadows. Cool, I dig it. Oh, thanks, Julia. This is really fun. It's kind of letting the drawing take its own form, increase the flow a little bit so we can get some real darky darks in the hair here. And then we can come back in and do some highlights. That's gonna be fun. Increase the height of the hair right here a little bit. We'll have to erase some of it away. Got some darkness going on here. It feels so natural to just like draw with an Apple pencil like you would with a normal drawing utensil. I don't have to hold it a certain way. I can hold it the way that feels right. And check it out. We still got a little bit of that pink coming through here. You're really learning now using your iPad. This is very helpful. Yay! Are you using Fresco? If you want to get like, I think the most intuitive drawing workflow or experience on an iPad, I think Fresco is probably the way to go. I just feel like you pick a tool and then you just go for it. All right, now let's erase some of our highlights. I'm not gonna lie, fam. They almost had me in this one. But then I feel like we're, we're coming out the other side, successful. So this is where we can change the shape, kind of sculpt as we need to. We can keep some of those little baby hairs at the top. Maybe I sculpted away too much. And let's put in some of these highlights. Got a little bit down here. We talked about this a lot yesterday, but about drawing hair like in chunks instead of individual strands. So I have these kind of chunks that move together and they're highlight, highlight, highlighted together. And we are going to be done here in just a few minutes. Here I can use just the very tip whoops, to carve some very specific strands. We can do that over here as well. I might jump in and light the eyes just a little bit. And we got a nice kind of, I don't know, foggy image. Feels good. Okay, so let's look at all of our drawings together. I don't want to look at this one. Actually, that one I do want to look at. I don't want to look at that one. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I'm actually going to... Duplicate everything so we can make it a little bit smaller and not worry. Whoa, that looks really good. Duplicate this. Merge it down. Merge this group. Turn this off. Make it smaller. We got this one. We got this one. I don't really care if that one gets messed up. We got 
this one, duplicate it. And, whoops, full screen, no thanks. I think those are the three that really came to full fruition. I guess we do have the just black and white version as well. Duplicate it. And turn this one on. Out, out. Whoops. <laughs> Got too many groups going on here. There we go. There we go. Thanks for your patience, everybody. So which one do you guys like the most? I kind of like the one that I just made. It feels super soft and vintage, just like me. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Appreciate it. Yeah, if you guys want to check me out on Behance or on Instagram, I'm Kathleen Illustrated pretty much everywhere. I like to illustrate. It makes sense. And we did a bunch of different workflows yesterday and today. So we did some focusing on the facial features and letting the other parts of the body be a little bit more uh, intuitive. This was a no erasing anything, just going for it, being careful where we were dropping down lines just with a pencil. And this was with charcoal using the side of our brush to kind of drop in value and then erase out value. Steve likes the recent one plus the one from yesterday, yes. I think those are probably the strongest. Agreed. So I'm gonna head out of here. I'm not gonna be back for the rest of the week, but again, if you wanna hang out with me on Instagram or anywhere else, I will be there, Kathleen Illustrated. And then I'll be back for a daily creative challenge in two weeks. So if you wanna learn some Photoshop, not really illustration, but more like photo compositing and that kind of thing, uh, come hang out then. But either way, stick around at 7 p.m. Andrew's going to be doing his Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge if you ever wanted to learn Illustrator. And uh, come back tomorrow for more Adobe Live. I will miss you, but I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.